On today's show, we're going to be talking about the Godox X Pro and how it controls these fantastic little lights that we talked about last week. You're watching the edited version of a live show. To watch the complete event, including the Q&A, click the links in the description below. Today we're talking about the Godox X Pro, a remote control for their lights. These are two V862s. We talked about these about a week ago. We'll link to that show to appear. That was part one of the show, if you haven't seen that. When I first bought this setup, I picked up this remote here, the X1T, because it's like 40 bucks or something, and it gives you radio trigger, radio control over these lights. And it does, and it works, but this little interface on here is a little bit hard to use. And then one of my lovely viewers, one of you fine folk, said to me on, uh, on Twitter or in the comments somewhere that actually the X-Pro was a much better remote, better range, easier to use, more fe flexibility. And I looked it up and it's all of $70. So for 70 bucks, you have a much more robust remote controls. This is what this show is primarily about today. On the side, you've got two switches on here, power switch, and this, one of the only things that I had to look up in the manual, this is a focus assist lamp. So you can turn that on or off with a physical switch on here. So what this means is if I've got this thing on my camera, you see the light shining into the camera. That's creating a diamond pattern on your subject to assist in focusing. So that's what that is. And on this side over here, you do have a little trap door. Behind that, you will find a PC sync cord and a USB slide. Um, let me talk about the USB thing for a moment though, because the whole point of that is that you can update their firmware. And I said on the show last time that I would figure out how to do the firmware update and do it live on the next show. I'm not gonna do that because you have to have a PC or for completely for free, but with a fair amount of setup, you can run a virtual box and you can run the installers from there. Now, I am not gonna show you how to do that because there is a fantastic video already online. We're gonna link to that one right up here as well that takes you through the entire process. It is specifically about setting up your Godox flashes and using the virtual box. I got it set up on my computer and I've updated all of the units. Right away, you see this really awesome thing where we see multiple groups of lights simultaneously in here and you have a button next to each one of them. And what this means is that to control a different light, you don't have to go digging through the menus, you simply hit the button of the one you wanna control. This is one of the big advantages of this unit. So you'll see this one here is labeled as, where is it, group A, so that's A. This one's in group B. These are both in slave mode, and in case you missed that from last time, you do have to put them in slave mode. That's what this button here does. You simply cycle through it until the screen goes orange, and that enters the slave mode. It seems to forget what group it's in when you do that, which is a little bit annoying. But the group cycles here, it does remember the channel number. Of course, they all have to be on the same channel, and then the lights are in whatever group you want it to be in. So we now have group A, group B. That's group A, group B. And when I want to make a change, I hit on the button here next to it, the physical button that brings up group A. And now I can do things like change the mode on that. And let's turn it off, turn it back on. There we go. There's TTL. That has now changed to TTL. If I cycle it again, it goes manual, it goes manual, and now I can run the dial here to make the changes to it, and you can see the numbers changing here simultaneously. You wanna change B, I simply push the B button. I'm now in TTL there, or I can change that to manual and make the changes there as well. So it's really, really convenient to have this ability to very quickly not only make the changes, but see at a glance everything at once. You know exactly what A, B, and C groups are set into. And you may have noticed that there is even D and E on here as extra groups, and you can do even more groups than that if you're working with lights that are compatible with it. Right here, you've got your soft buttons just like you had on the flash before. We saw these before where these soft buttons change functionality depending on what you're doing. And in this case, you'll see this one says zoom and channel. If I push it once, it takes me to the zoom mode. I can now control the zoom on these lights. Now this is a little bit funky, so this is something I do want to show you here. I'll hit A to zoom on A. And notice that this says 28, this is blank right now. If I move this, can you hear it moving? We are actually moving the head, however, we're not seeing it displayed in here. Plus, this will allow us to go to numbers that are far higher than what the flash should actually be able to do. So it's not a perfect synchronization between, but it is actually controlling the zoom. Whereas here, if I go to B, it says 24, I'll change it, and nothing's happening. This isn't changing, and we're not actually hearing the, the head move, so it's not moving. So even though this makes it look like we're able to control it, we're not here. And the way you can control it is you have to go into the zoom setting where you would set it manually, take it all the way down to the bottom to where you would normally put it into auto. So if this was on the camera, that would now say auto, but off the camera, it just has the dashes. But now that also means that from here, I can actually control it. So you can there, you can hear it again. 
that's how the zoom sending works. So it's a little bit funky. I would say even potentially a little bit buggy, but it does work. Let's get out of zoom. Now, here's an interesting thing as well. We're looking at it in this mode. I've got control. However, the zoom button here is gone. You have to deselect, and this takes some getting used to, and this comes up a couple times where to get out of this, you have to deselect so nothing is selected to get back to that toggle. I actually have to hit the set button to deselect it, and now I get my zoom toggle button back. So now when I hit that, it takes me back to the power control. The slash on there means channel. And whenever you see a button with a dual function, the second function is a long press to bring up whatever it is. So in this case, it's the channel control. If I do a long press on that, it will bring up the ability to change the channel. So you can see here I'm on channel 20. And of course, all devices have to be on the same channel to be able to communicate with each other. Next, you have sync. That is simply to enable high, high speed sync mode. So you have that capability right there. Let's get out of the zoom function. All, which I think is so cool. So we're in manual mode right now. Let me just kind of set this up a little bit more. Let me take this up a little bit brighter. So let's say I've got this one manual at 164th and that one manual at 128th. OK, let's back out of that setting. If I hit the All button, it's now selected everything so I can take everything evenly up or down. I think that is fantastic. So all of your lights, if you have a nice balance, you like the balance between the A group and the B group and the C group, but you want to make them all a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, that one button does that. And I think that is super, super cool. Then you have a mod button, which is a modeling light. And these don't have modeling lights. That's for controlling the studios. But that will allow you to toggle the modeling lights on and off. And you can do those individually as well. And then you have the, we'll see the mode button we already saw. That allows you to, if I go back into A, for example, to change the mode between off, TTL, and manual. So that's what the mode button does. Press and hold that, and it will lock. So if you're doing a shoot, you want to lock it, press and hold it. There it says locked, and now no, none of these buttons are going to do anything. Just a brief interruption to remind you to check out photojoseph.com, where you'll find all of my YouTube videos organized by product, making it really easy to find exactly what you're looking for. You may also want to check out my live training where I do deep dives on various photo and video apps, often resulting in hours and hours of training for those products. Also, be sure to check out the workshops page to see if there's any upcoming events you may want to join me on. And finally, while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss a thing. All right, now back to our show. Let's go to the menu button next. The menu brings up the pretty extensive menu controls that are in here, and there's some interesting options. So first of all, you have your standby, right? Obviously, do you want it to be able to go to sleep or not? Beeping, I like this. So I can control whether the flashes beep from here. Flash beeping is not something I would normally want, especially if I'm shooting on camera flash. It's just not the kind of thing that I want. But in a studio environment, it's quite useful, especially if you have multiple lights going, you hear them beep, you know that they are ready to fire again. Let me turn the beep on. And now when I fire it, do you hear the difference there? So that first beep is one of them flashing that it's done. That's the 128th power one. It's immediately done. And then, of course, the other one's uh, taking a little bit longer to recycle because it was a full power. This step, how fine the steps are between your settings, um, including the ability to go to 1256 adjustment, which seems to be certain lights because these don't appear to do that. Light, that's your background light there. It's 12 seconds by default, or you can have it off or on full time. Next up is sync. Set it to out if you want to use the PC sync cord on the side of it. Grouping, so you have five groups now, A through E, or you can set it to 16 groups, zero through. When you go to 16, it's only manual control, but that does give you a lot more groups. Again, you have to have compatible lights for that, but it gives you a lot more control over it. Your LCD adjustment in here, just making that a little higher, lower contrast. Okay. There's single shooter and multi shooter mode. The descriptions are exactly the same, except it says single or multi shooter. Distance. So, this is the one that got me into trouble when I was setting up for today's show and I couldn't get. I couldn't talk to one of the lights. And what I realized was that I was having trouble talking to the light that was closest to it, because by default, it was set to 1 to 100 meters. Notice the second setting is 0 to 30 meters. So it's my interpretation of this, is that it is a stronger signal output at 1 to 100, so strong that it is kind of interfering in when it's super close. Like it just, it's too strong of a signal for it to read when it's in the closer proximity. As soon as I changed that to 0 to 30, it started working perfectly, even though the units were side by side. By side. So kind of an interesting, interesting thing in there, but that's worth knowing. Um, ID is not used. That is something that is apparently an old, old thing that's been deprecated. And then this allows you to choose which light systems you're using for something called TCM. It's 
TTL converted to manual, I think is what it is. And here's how it works. It's kind of cool. Let's say that I'm in full TTL mode. If at this point, I would love to know what these settings are in manual mode, I press and hold this TCM button. Now it's not going to actually show you the proper calculation now because this isn't on the camera. It hasn't fired a test shot. It doesn't actually know. But when you do have it all put together, what happens when you press and hold this is it converts over and now it's just going to put both of them at full power, but it would say manual at say 1256 or whatever and M at 1128, whatever it might be. It tells you what the manual settings are. And that is everything to it. We're going to jump into the Q&A now. If you have any questions and you're watching live, drop them into the live chat. And if you're not watching live, then just drop them into the questions down below, into the comments below, and I'll do my best to get to them.